Tall Tale TV. Of Monsters and Mushrooms by Leslie Heron. Chapter 18, Lactarius. Like a massive, snow-covered yeti after a long hibernation, Brig emerged from the gate, stepping out into a bright and sunny world. He shook his whole body, flinging bits of snow and ice into the air. He stepped beneath the shade of a giant palm tree and set Vel hastily into the sand before pulling off his coat with a sigh of relief. The cold, steely winds of the frigid wasteland melted into shimmering ivory sand in a warm, tropical breeze. They couldn't have been more lucky at their game of portal roulette if they had tried. Hey, watch where you're flicking that stuff! Evan cried out, moving behind Eric to avoid the downpour of water and snow as Brig ruffled his hands through his hair, trying to dislodge the stubborn icicles. Wow! Brig, this place is amazing! Attila's face lit up with delight as he dropped his soaking poncho to the ground. He scurried up a sand dune and turned to face them, gazing in wonder at the skyline. I've never seen the ocean before! Hey! Don't want... Eric started, but his warning fell on deaf ears as the others tore off after Attila, whooping and hollering with excitement, leaving a trail of soppy coats and shoes. Wander off. He pulled a face, huffed, and slumped into the sand next to where Brig had set his unconscious brother moments before. The sun danced, warm and bright, off crystal blue waters. Birds circled lazily above, occasionally calling out across the sandy expanse. Eric watched as frost melted away slowly from his brother, and felt relief when the color began to settle back into his skin. What a fine mess I've gotten us into. He sighed slowly and turned his gaze back towards the ocean. The waves lapped gently against the shore, inviting him in. You know. I'll have to remember this setting on the dial. He smiled as he twirled the portal locker in his hands. It would make a great place to vacation once in a while. That is, if we can stop Alpha. Eric paused his outward thoughts. It's not really talking to yourself if someone's there, right? He shrugged a little and looked down as he pulled off a panel on the back of the device. Inside were bunches of circuits and jumbled wires. He felt a heavy weight of apprehension sink into the pit of his stomach. I don't even know how to upgrade this to trap him. It's all still... it's just theoretical. What if I can't? Eric pushed the panel back into place and pocketed the device once again. He pulled his legs up against his chest, resting his chin on his knees. What if I fail? You won't. Eric glanced over at his brother, who had finally managed to pry open his eyes. You weren't supposed to hear that. You'll figure it out. I know you will. You're the smartest guy I know. We just need to get you someplace that has the tech you need. And you'll see. You'll figure it out. Vel encouraged with a crooked smile. Eric looked at his brother with concern, leaning over to force one of his eyelids to open wider. I think you may have suffered some mild brain damage from the hypothermia. You're not acting like yourself. Vel grumbled in anger, pulling himself to a sitting position. Ugh, never mind. Forget I said anything. Eric smiled and clapped a hand on his brother's shoulder. Thanks. I needed that. Vel swatted his hand away. Shut up, he barked, looking around. Where's everyone else? I don't know. Somewhere over there? He turned to point a lazy finger just behind him, where Attila had disappeared earlier. He stopped when he saw a glint of something shiny beckoning to them. What the? Hey! You guys gotta see this! Attila hollered, waving his hat above his head. After several agonizing attempts to pull Vel free from the sand, Eric had to help his brother to the base of the rolling sand hills. It took many more painful tries and his continued support to get them both to the peak. They were immediately greeted with the island's dark secret. This wasn't just some deserted hunk of land floating adrift at sea. 
The island was actually a large sandbar, and this side of the dunes was bathed in the shadows of an oncoming tempest. Angry winds churned the sea, revealing miles upon miles of jagged and treacherous coral along the coast. A reef that had, no doubt, claimed countless lives, leaving only a watery graveyard of battered and broken vessels. Old clipper ships and galleys still had tattered sails that flapped effortlessly in the breeze, like ghosts clinging desperately to the wooden remains of the ship. A few had broke through the reef and the surf, managing only to fall apart on the shore. The sand at the water's edge was littered with broken siding, rusted and damaged supplies, chunks of driftwood, several sun-bleached skeletons basking beside an overturned longboat, and GOLD! Attila exclaimed, jumping into the nearest pile. He began shoveling coins, pearl necklaces, and gems into the various pockets of his vest. We're rich! You mean I'm witch? Evan clarified as he stepped out from a gap in the bow of the remains of a massive clipper ship. Put that stuff back! It's mine! I saw it first! He adjusted the waist on his new pair of faded pinstriped pantaloons. Just cause you saw it first, don't make it yours! Attila retorted, scooping more gems into his pockets. What about that cabin boy you robbed of his clothes? Well, it ain't like he'll be needing them anymore. Eric smirked as he plucked a dusty, cobwebbed feather plume from the pocket of Evan's new doublet. <laughs> you look ridiculous. Well, I certainly wasn't going to continue traversing the realms in nothing but bark and flower petals, Evan humped and began rolling up the legs and sleeves of his new ensemble. Brig marched up towards them, hands wrapped around two dull cutlasses and a dagger. I found a few weapons. They're nothing special, though. He tossed the blades on the ground, next to a sack he had fashioned from a bit of sailcloth. And I managed to find us some provisions. Yeah, and I got an upgrade! Attila was eagerly gesturing to the faded leather eye patch now strapped to his face. It had been overly encrusted with gems to resemble a poorly designed iris. I hope you washed that, Vel mentioned with a grimace. Attila quirked a brow. No, why? Vel wrinkled his nose in disgust and shook his head. Well, I don't see what loads of dusty pirate goods are going to do for us. Well, let's get going. We need to get out of here before Alpha catches up. Eric nodded back towards the portal. That, and I don't like the looks of that storm headed our way. A quick spin of the destination dial, and they were soon hurtling down another swirling vortex towards the exit. They were spat out in a desolate and vacant world. Not empty in the sense that it was barren, but rather that it was devoid of, well, anything. Engulfed by a suffocating blackness, the air didn't seem able to move, and there was no sound. The darkness was so oppressive, they couldn't even be certain they were standing on ground. It was as if they were lost in the void of a black hole. The only light that fought a losing battle against the gloom emanated from the dimly glowing portal behind them. Do you guys hear that? Brig's deep voice died instantly in the vacuum around them, unable to carry much past his lips. Even their breathing was muffled, silenced by the lack of anything to reflect it. This realm was truly and utterly empty. The others tried to listen, straining to hear what Brig had caught. There, just barely, was the sound of a whisper. A woman cooing as though to a child. It was soft, sweet, and almost alluring. Vel cupped his hands around his mouth and shouted, Hello! Who's out there? His voice carried a little farther, projected outwards into the dark. Suddenly, the whispering grew louder, but also softer, clearer, and more muffled with every second that passed. New voices joined in, Young, old, men and women, all of them filled with malice, hunger, 
and sorrow. Eric fumbled with the device, his hands shaking as cold sweat chilled him to his core. Evan was backed up against his boots, shrinking away from the darkness. Vel clenched his mechanical fist uselessly, and Attila pressed his back against his friends. Brig stood sentinel before them all, his hackles raised as his eyes darted frantically back and forth. Squinting at the device against the flickering light of the portal, Eric managed to find the dial and gave it a hasty spin. The voices peaked and combined into an ear-splitting roar, like a rotten wind howling through the jaws of old man death. They dove into the vortex as one and were swept mercifully away from the eerie realm of shadows and whispers. None of them spoke of what had just happened, of what the voices whispered quietly in each of their ears. They shook off the nightmare slowly, gradually regaining sense and returning to the here and now. In a less fun version of a water slide, they were dumped into the middle of a glowing orange swamp with a sickening splash. The day glow mire stretched on and on, disappearing behind giant mangrove trees that encircled them. They polluted the air with copious amounts of toxic-looking and foul-smelling orange pollen. Evan lifted a hand to watch algae and swamp water slide slowly off his arm. Ugh! What is this stuff? Oh, great, Val grumbled. I'm stuck. He struggled to wrench his leg free from the quicksand that had been lurking below the water's surface. He reached for Brig, grabbing on to the giant murk with his mechanical hand, hoping this would keep him from sinking further. Ha! Huh, ha! Huh. Are those what I think they are? Attila's eyes were darting around at the sudden appearance of many acid green logs, scaly jumbles of driftwood that blinked with reptilian eyes. Eric had been scooping handfuls of algae off the device and was too preoccupied to notice that one of the logs was lazily moving closer, and a mouth yawned open to reveal rows and rows of dagger-edged teeth. Couldn't it have been another beach, he grumbled as he gave the device another whirl, and was wrenched free from the mire by Brig just as the creature snapped its jaws around the muck where he had been. Brig was busy plucking the others from the swamp, tossing them haphazardly into the portal, before he threw himself in after them. He didn't feel like wrestling with a swamp full of suspicious gator logs. They landed in a tiny crumbling pathway in the very heart of a cramped subterranean cave. Crystals lined the walls, the ceiling, the floor, and lit the air around them with shimmering waves of color. Another spin of the dial, and they were dancing around bubbling pools of lava that pockmarked a jagged stone landscape to avoid the occasional molten fireball in their attempts to get back to the gate. Another portal change, and they were hurtling towards a wall of swirling brown. Strong winds buffeted against them, pushing them to their knees the moment they landed. The air was filled with sand, hindering visibility and dimming the glow from a haloed sun above them. It stung deeply as it whipped around and pelted them from all directions. Small tumbleweeds danced on the wind, occasionally bouncing off the huddled group. We need to get out of this storm. Change the portal, Vel ordered, pulling his coat collar high against his face. Eric flipped the dial on the device. Nothing happened. He did it again and watched the portal give a feeble wobble before returning to its previous state. I think. He tried once more, and the device gave a high-pitched whine before sputtering piteously. I think it overheated. We're stuck here. Let's go find some shelter before we're torn to shreds, Briggs shouted, plucking Evan out of the sand and stuffing him back into his vest. He looked around, squinting against the sand. He spotted a dark shape blurred against the horizon. There! Heads bowed against the wind. They trudged through the shifting sand towards the mass. They ducked into the crook of the stone, finding just enough shelter at its base to escape the worst of the storm. The group huddled close, backs turned to the wind and sand, and slowly, exhaustion won against vigilance as the hours rolled by.
Vela woke, comfortable and warm. Soft, furry, cotton-like cushions covered his body. He smiled and stretched, opening his eyes to the light of dawn breaking over a still and silent desert. He picked up one of the cushions, examining it. What the hell? These hadn't been there the night before. The small brown ball of fur opened a single large watery eye and purred at him. Whoa! Vel recoiled, scrambling to his feet and extricating himself from the pile of furry creatures. They began to stir, all of them turning to look up at him, purring affectionately. Vel recognized them as what he had assumed were small tumbleweeds the night before. He backpedaled, but they followed at his heels. Eric snickered behind him. Aw, don't be like that. I think they like you. For some reason. Vel spun around to tell off his brother, and instead fell backwards as he tripped over the little fluff balls. He hit the sand and was suddenly buried by a swarm of purring cotton poofs. They snuggled in close, and Vel looked up for some assistance. Instead, he saw what it was they had camped beneath. He had expected it to be a landmass, or possibly even a building, but to his surprise, it was a colossal statue that rose at least fifteen feet out of the sand. The figure was the shape of a man with the head of a falcon, buried in the sand up to its navel. Its arms stretched out to hold aloft a massive staff ending in the head of a jackal. It was the kind of statue usually built in homage to, and in the likeness of, a deity. Or perhaps, more accurately in this case, to guard the passage between two worlds. It towered high above them, glaring down with wicked ruby eyes. The artistry was extremely reminiscent of the Egyptian artifacts they had seen in the museum. Vel sat up, dumping his furry admirers into his lap. What in the... Eric offered a hand down to his brother. I know, right? As far as we can tell, this is the only structure in the area. I imagine, though, that the storms bury and unveil things all the time, so it might be the only one we can see. Vel took Eric's hand and pulled himself to his feet. Well, at least that means there won't be any locals trying to kill us this time. The purring around his feet intensified as the furry critters rubbed against his ankles. Unless you count these things. Brig, seeing Vel awake, walked over and offered him a strip of salted fish. Breakfast? It's a bit stale, but what can you expect from a shipwreck? Vel stared at Brig for a moment, as if he'd never been offered a gift in his life, and slowly took the fish, sniffing it cautiously. Uh, thanks? Brig nodded, handed a piece to Eric, and went off in search of the others. Vel gingerly touched his tongue to the meat, grimaced, and dropped it on the ground where his fluffy followers happily devoured it for him. So, is the portal locker working? Eric disposed of his fish in a similar manner and pulled the device from his pocket. As far as I can tell, yeah. We might give it a bit longer just to be safe, though. The thing is, this is just a symptom of a bigger problem. This was meant as a prototype, not a final product. I don't know how long before it completely breaks down. We need to find tech, and fast. Vel nodded gravely. He had expected as much. Hey guys! Attila poked his head around the behemoth's back. There's writing on this thing! Check it out! Eric gave his brother a questioning look. Want to take a look? You go ahead. I gotta figure out how to get rid of my fan club. Vel waited until his brother was out of sight and did a quick glance around. Okay, no one was watching. He knelt down and offered a gentle scratch to one of the creatures on the top of its head. It cooed and pressed into his hand. He'd never admit it out loud, but they were unbelievably cute. He stood and made his way to the statue, his entourage in tow. He didn't trust the statue probably because it reminded him of that statue from the museum, the one of Anubis and its ominous blank stare. He could hear the others arguing about what the strange hieroglyphs might mean. Eric proposed 
that they were depicting a ritual, while Attila insisted it identified aliens. Vel noticed, covered by a layer of sand, a set of hieroglyphs on the front of the statue as well. He raised his mechanical hand and brushed away the dirt. His hand snapped palm down against the surface of the statue, causing him to lurch forward. He tried to pull his hand free, but it was magnetized against the structure as tight as if it had been welded. Vel let out a low sigh. This just wasn't going to be his day. Of Monsters and Mushrooms, an ongoing series by Leslie Heron, is a crossover fanfiction mixing her own characters and settings with a few of those created by author J.D. Wiley. She writes for the fun of devising new ways of messing with her characters and seeing just how much trouble they can get into. Cap'n! Cap'n! Old Billy One Thumb spotted land off the starboard bow. He says there be several ships broken on the shore. Hmm, aye. We best not be trying to land, though. Have the men steer clear. Begging your pardon, Cap'n, but surely we could use the fresh water, and the ships might have stores we could pilfer. Oh, aye. Stores of gold and jewels aplenty, to be sure. Them thar are the ships of One-Eye Bruce, the scurviest dog to set sail in these waters in the last fifty years. A ruthless buccaneer, was he? Eh, uh, no. I mean, he had scurvy, and fleas enough to strip a dog to its bones. I wouldn't touch that treasure for all the tea in China, lest I be itching till judgment day. Tis a curse I'd wish on no man or beast. Nar, we'll be making our fortune elsewhere, lad. Some treasure just ain't worth it. <laughs>